everyone, this is Liz with The Restless Wild, and I am so glad to have you here for my March 2021 bullet journal playing with me video. So, uh, I don't know about you, but for me, this is coming up on the one year anniversary of the pandemic lockdown. I went home from my office on St. Patrick's Day in 2020, and yeah, not a fun milestone, but it's memorable at least. Um, so I was trying to think about what do I want to have focused on for my March theme and thinking about spring and optimism and looking forward. So certainly trying to keep it along those sort of veins, but also playing to more, to playing to more of my strengths, which would be more of the kind of organic natural feel. Um, so of course, when I'm thinking about March, one of the first things I think about is St. Patrick's Day, especially since that's the one year anniversary for me of the pandemic. Um, and I didn't necessarily want to do anything overtly St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I don't love the idea of having leprechauns all over my journal, personally. So I was trying to think, okay, how can I spin this just a little bit? And, you know, there's shamrocks and four-leaf clovers, but when I think of clovers, I, I think more of my backyard. I have a fair bit of a, of a clover lawn instead of a very green lawn. Personally, I think that's a beautiful lawn because I love the white clovers and it supports a biodiverse, pollinator-friendly ecosystem in my backyard rather than turf, boring turf is boring. Boo monoculture. But anyways, so I was thinking about St. Patrick's Day and clovers and went with the theme of basically clovers and bees. So uh, but a very natural, more realistic kind of style um, rather than a cartoony leprechaun sort of style. So you shall see that with all the clovers and bees in my March 2021 bullet journal. So... Without any further ado, let's get started. So once again, I am using my Archer and Olive A5 Night Sky Blank Pages Notebook. But before we get into that, I'm actually going to switch over to a watercolor notepad. This is the Strathmore watercolor. This is the 400 series. It's a cold press, so it's more of the intermediate level watercolor paper. Um, and what I'm going to do here is my cover page. Uh, I've been experimenting, I suppose, with more watercolors. At least, I've been more curious about trying watercolors. And overall, my bullet journal style tends to be a line drawing approach that I end up coloring in. I, I basically treat my bullet journal like a coloring book uh, during the month, which is kind of fun. So I start with these simple line drawings and then fill things in, often with the um, Tombow dual brush pens, but I thought it would be kind of fun to apply some of the things I'm learning about watercolors and do a watercolor painting in my bullet journal a little bit later. I have done a watercolor cover page before and put it directly into my bullet journal. Uh, <clears throat> but I did have trouble with the crinkling pages, so I figured I would actually do the initial watercolor drawing on watercolor paper so that I can paint a little easier directly on it and not worry about the paper buckling. So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to do this sort of line, draw line drawing with a clover and a bee and march in a kind of cute rounded script. I did sketch everything out in advance. That is my general approach is I spend a lot of time sketching things out first in pencil so that I really like what I have before coming back over and doing this with my uh, Micron pens. I do use reference photos for the most part. Um, sometimes it's a mashup of multiple different photos, uh, just trying to make sure I get the details right. But I like to have fairly accurate drawings, especially of plants and animals, because I like to, I like to get to know the plant and animal a little bit better. 
And at this point, I'm going to add a little bit more detail to my clover flower. Technically, we may call it one flower, but it's actually a cluster of many flowers. And that's called an inflorescence. And in this case, you may sometimes hear each individual flower in the cluster called a floret. So yes, cluster. So once I've got my drawing completed, I'm actually going to cut this out. And I'm using my X-Acto knife and not being very exacto because y'all, I am not good at cutting. It is not my strength. There's kind of a reason why I've never cut my bullet journal. Um, gosh, kindergarten with scissors, it was a struggle. So yeah, I am being not very exact with my X-Acto knife, just trying to pare it down. Fortunately, I was going for more of a graphic open-ended design here with the exception of squaring off the leaves in the lower left corner. Um, it's like, yeah, as long as I get it on the page, I'm going to be happy <laughs> and not worry too much about having perfect edges and just gluing it in on a glue stick, which I may or may not have stolen from my office on my last day of work. Shh, no one tell. And jumping into my habit tracker. As usual, I'm setting up too many habits. So let's actually talk about something a little more interesting. Not just the usual habits, but a little more info about the honeybee and the white clover. So for the most part, I am drawing white clover. And the Latin name for that is Trifolium repens. It is actually native to Europe and Central Asia, but it's now common to lawns, including mine, throughout most of North America. The name has the Latin tres, three, and folium, meaning leaf, which gives us the word trefoil. Uh, of course, if you had a four-leaf clover, that would be a quatrefoil. And then for the bee, this is the domesticated honeybee, the Apis mellifera, which is also native to Eurasia. Which I actually found pretty interesting because I started going down the rabbit hole of beekeeping <laughs> shortly after I was drawing this. Um, it would be awesome to one day have a hive of bees. Um, and discovered that, oh, hey, actually, Honeybees are less hairy, basically, uh, versus bumblebees um, or bumble type bees that are native to North America uh, tend to have hair all over the body, which actually surprisingly makes the bumblebee a better pollinator because all that extra hair can more easily pick up pollen. And so, interestingly enough, I heard that the bumblebee is actually a really terrible <laughs> lander. Um, it's very messy and inaccurate when it lands on a flower, so it picks up pollen even more. Whereas the honeybee actually has like a separate pollen sack, so it picks up nectar and pollen. It has like little sacks. It's not exactly bee barf in terms of making the bee bread out of the pollen and honey out of the nectar, but I mean it's close enough. It's, it's bee barf from a separate <laughs> pollen and nectar specific stomach. So, fun times. Anyways, bees are awesome. You should support bees, especially because they are really struggling right now. So, be friendly to your bees because without them we might die because nothing can get pollinated. Anyways, Despite the doom and gloom, this is supposed to be an optimistic spread about pollination and clovers and, you know, even though a lot of people see clovers as a weed, I actually think they are very lovely flowers. I love seeing a clover lawn. Uh, I find them very soft and cool underfoot. You run barefoot across the grass and yeah, yay, bees and clover. So I'm going to keep adding a little bit more detail to my mood tracker. I have been taking the approach of doing kind of coloring book style mood trackers. So I make a scene of 
items that match my theme and number them either individuals or clusters and then I'll go through and color them based on my color code which I will add later I did not include in this video um, but you can kind of see like uh, the clovers and the flowers and the bees are labeled 1 through 31 and so I will just go back and color them in with the appropriate color but it's kind of fun because it's like you know it feels like a coloring book even though I might be putting blue on a bee um, probably won't use blue but I'll probably use yellows and greens so I might like make one of my bees green or something which is ridiculous but it still feels like a coloring book and it's somewhat therapeutic um, and as always I will actually have all these available for uh, printables and if you are on my patreon or want to purchase them individually on Etsy so those printables will be available and you can have your very own coloring book coloring book bullet journal and I am sneaking in one four leaf clover in here for St. Patrick's Day because I like to give a very subtle nod to the holidays in my uh, scenery mood trackers. So yeah, and you know while I keep adding a little bit more detail to this spread, um, my, my clover patch as you will, uh, I can give you a little more information on the honeybee or the bees in general. Um, so. Apidae is the largest family of bees. And so when I'm saying that, we're talking about like the taxonomic order. So kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, variety. Family, that's kind of like right in the middle. So we've got the Apidae family, and that includes several genera, the plural genus, including Bombus, which is bumblebees, Apis, which includes the honeybee, Osmia, which is the mason bees, and Xylocopinae, which includes carpenter bees. So I focus on bumblebees, honeybees, mason bees, and carpenter bees because those are the ones that I most commonly see in my backyard. You may see other bees, but those are the ones that interest me. Um, I did not actually draw different types of bees in this theme. I thought about it and then I was like, uh, I just stuck with a honeybee um, because I somewhat daydreaming of having my own hive and honey, but that's for another project. <laughs> um, so I did not include them, but I actually do have a big soft spot for bumblebees. And I just learned that bumblebees um, have something called sonication or buzz pollination. So uh, if you're familiar with a bumblebee, you're probably aware that like they definitely buzz very noticeably. Um, so apparently the bumblebee, when they land on a flower, first of all, they are very bad landers. And so they are basically rolling in pollen <laughs> whenever they land on the flower. And then they actually, while they're on the flower, they flex their wing muscles so that they buzz on the flower. And this vibration can release pollen and that in particular is important for blueberries because apparently the blueberries uh, don't release the pollen really easily you actually have to like vibrate or shake or buzz your flowers in order to release the pollen and facilitate pollination so fun fact love on your bumblebees because otherwise you may not enjoy blueberries very much <laughs> And before I skip past this too quickly, I am setting up my February retrospective and my focus spreads. So for the February, February retrospective, I like to just take a little bit of time to reflect on what went well, what didn't, and how to improve. And I also like to set a focus or an intention for the month. Um, might be, it's kind of like a word of the year, but being able to be specific for the actual month. And these are normal spreads for me, but I just like to be able to make them pretty and decorative and have a little bit of time to reflect on the previous month and set an intention for how to move forward. So yeah, being a little detailed here, drawing my honeybee. My fuzzy little bee is fuzzy! Oh gosh, I think bees are the cutest thing. Maybe a little 
little fuzz. The cute little antennae. So one thing that's interesting to note, particularly for a lot of the bees native to North America, is um, many of them are actually solitary, or they have very small hives. Um, so some of the bumblebees uh, may have a colony and a queen, but they will be typically smaller than honeybee hives. Um, and you know, for the mason bees and the carpenter bees, they tend to be solitary. And then white clover is actually a legume, and it's supposed to be uh, actually a high quality grazing pasture thing. Plant. Plant. That's the word. Um, because it's fairly palatable and it's highly nutritious. And as a legume, it is a good nitrogen fixer. And it's cool season, so it's actually really good for filling in any pastures where it has been thinned out a little bit or it might be a little early in the season uh, the clover can pop up and be at early spring. So I am just doing my March goals spread here as usual doing a large spread with a few big detail items uh, because I like to have lots of space for setting and tracking goals. going to include a few flower heads with lots of little florets, uh, some of the clover leaves. Um, the clover leaves may or may not have these little uh, crescent watermarks or thumbprints uh, on them. I put them in because it, if I drew just the flower or if I drew just the leaves, um, but I had my bees and my flowers being super detailed, the leaves looked like weirdly cartoonish. So I went back and added little crescent watermarks to all the leaves just to give them a little bit of detail. They didn't seem so bland. And of course, drawing lots and lots of honeybees was a good little reminder of all the little bee anatomy. So head, thorax, abdomen, and six legs, and two sets of wings, and spiracles. I always forget about that. Um, so basically, in the exoskeleton, the areas that might expand or contract to let air in and have gas exchange because, yeah. Yeah, that, that's how insects get their oxygen. Isn't it weird thinking about something that's like not actually breathing? It's just gas exchange through kind of a valve system. Yeah, I should I should put that in a sci-fi story. That'd be fun. And just putting some finishing touches on the details here. flipping over to do work deliverables with a simple little honeybee and a clover flower and leaves. And then I am also setting up a quote page, and this is actually a full poem from Emily Dickinson, 
and it says, to make a prairie, it takes a clover and one bee, one clover and a bee, and reverie. The reverie alone will do if bees are few. And I really love this poem because I love the concept of, you know, building a prairie from just very little, um, but also to diving into the concept of reverie and what does reverie mean and the kind of the delusion. Can you actually build a whole prairie with just one clover and a bee um, without being a little delusional? So yeah, so that was, uh, I liked it. I appreciated what Emily Dickinson was saying here. And so with that, it is time for the full flip through of the March 2021 bullet journal. My honeybee and clover theme. So yeah, we have got the cover page and habit tracker. My at a glance and mood tracker, which I labeled feeling clover it. My February retrospective and my focus page. My March goals spread. My March work deliverables and my quote page. Thank you very much for joining me for this March 2021 Plan With Me. I hope you all have a marvelous March and I will see you again in one month. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and like and subscribe. And that would mean a whole lot to me to have you all here for future videos. Thanks so much and have a great one. Bye.